How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Warzone 2.0. This video is going to be heavily focusing on optimizations for all PC types all the way from older ultra low end laptops all the way up to the latest and greatest in gaming hardware. This video is going to be helping you achieve the best gameplay experience possible by helping you increase your FPS, reduce your input latency and achieve the best in game settings for a competitive edge with great visual fidelity. If you guys do enjoy this video and are happy with your results please do remember to leave a like on the videos it does help me out tremendously and let me know if your results, questions questions, queries in that comment section down below. And if you guys do enjoy this sort of content, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever new content goes live on the channel. To kick things off, we're first of all going to be ensuring that we're running on the latest Windows 10 update. This is incredibly important for anyone watching running on Windows 10, as the Windows 10 October 2020 update is actually one of the best Windows 10 gaming builds in around about the last two years. You will not lose any of your current files or any data, it will just simply update the installation of Windows you're currently running on. Never get inside of the description down below where you'll be finding the Windows 10 update link. Navigate down to the update now button, click this button once, go ahead and open up the upgrade tool. If you do see this prompt found here, this means that you are currently running on the latest version and you can simply go ahead and press exit. If you don't see this and you do see the option to upgrade this PC, choose all of the options to upgrade your current existing installation of Windows and you'll be up and running on the latest version of Windows 10 in no time. It's also incredibly important to ensure that you are running on the brand new latest GPU or graphics card drivers from your graphics card manufacturer. And you'll then navigate inside of the description down below to other the NVIDIA GeForce driver link or the AMD Radeon driver link. For those of you running on an NVIDIA graphics card, simply navigate over to the automatic driver updates utility found here, then select download now. Once the tool is finished downloading, simply open it up and it will detect and install the latest driver for you. For those of you running on an AMD Radeon based system, it's a very similar process. Simply navigate down to your link, go to the auto detect and install updates for Radeon graphics drivers, navigate down to download now, download the tool, open it up. Once again, this will detect and install the latest graphics card driver for your system. Now that we've got all of the boring updating steps out of the way, we can now go ahead and jump in with the optimizations. We're going to go ahead and right click on our desktop, go ahead and click on your control panel for either GPU. For those of you running on an NVIDIA graphics card, navigate up to the adjust image settings with preview tab, ensure that use the advanced 3D image settings has been checked, then press apply. We can then navigate over to the manage 3D settings tab. With inside of here, I then want you to simply pause the video, copy all of the settings shown as closely as you can. Once you're done with inside of there, we can continue to scroll down, pause the video once again, and continue to repeat these steps until you have every single option shown on screen, closely copied with inside of your settings. Once all of those settings have been set, navigate to the bottom right hand side and press apply. Once all of those settings have been set, we can then go ahead and exit out. Now for those of you running on an AMD Radeon graphics card, once again, navigate over to your desktop, right click and open up inside of your Radeon control panel. With inside of you, you simply then want to navigate over to the global graphics tab. Just like the Nvidia settings, simply go ahead and pause the video, copy all of the settings shown on screen now, go ahead and proceed on until every single one of your settings matches the one shown on screen. We're then good to go, apply those settings and we're good to continue on. This now leads us on to some Windows gaming specific optimizations which are incredibly important to do. First of all, navigate down to the bottom left hand side, type in game space mode, then click on game mode settings. Ensure that the Windows game mode is switched to the on position. I'd then recommend navigating up to the Xbox game bar tab and actually switching this to the off position if you do not use this feature as this can sometimes cause FPS issues and some minor game crashes. We can then follow that up by navigating back to the bottom left hand side, this time typing in GPU space settings. Navigating inside of the graphics settings panel with inside of here. Now, if you are running on the latest Windows 10 update, the latest GPU drivers and your hardware is supported, you may have the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. If you do have this option available with inside of here, I'd highly recommend turning this to the on position. Now, regardless if you see that option or not, we're also going to be navigating down to the graphics performance preference tab. With inside of here, we're going to go ahead and click on browse. The easiest way of finding where the game is installed to is to navigate over to this PC, then go to the top right hand side and we're going to be searching for modern warfare.exe, just like so, then press enter. After a few moments time, the modern warfare exe should then be found. Once you find the Modern Warfare EXE, go ahead and right click on the found file, then navigate down to open file location. Go ahead and select the Modern Warfare.exe manually with inside of here now. Go to the bottom right hand side, then press add. Once that's been added, navigate down to the Call of Duty Modern Warfare application with inside of here, navigate down to options, and ensure that high performance at the bottom is now selected. Then press save. For another very important optimization, navigate over to Call of Duty Warzone or Modern Warfare inside of the Battle.net launcher, go down to the options menu, then navigate down to show in Explorer. With inside of here, navigate inside of the Call of Duty Modern Warfare folder, scroll down until you proceed to find the modernwarfare.exe with inside of here. Once you've found this, right click, navigate down to properties. Navigate over to the compatibility tab, ensure that disable full screen optimizations is checked, change our DPI, override high DPI, 
OK, apply and OK. This now leads us on to some Battle.net specific optimizations. Once we've booted back inside of the Battle.net launcher, we're simply then going to be going up to the Blizzard logo once again, navigating down to Settings once again, this time now we're getting over to the left hand side to Game Settings. With inside of here, we're going to proceed to go down to Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Now for most of you that are experiencing crashing issues, low FPS or stuttering issues, there is an experimental optimization in which you can go ahead and try out. For this is to simply navigate down to Additional Command Line Arguments, check this box. With inside of this box, we're then going to be typing in dash D 3 D 11. You can find this in the description down below where you'll be able to copy and paste this directly inside of here. In some cases, this can also boost FPS as well. Once that's been set, go to the bottom right hand side and select done. If you do wish to remove this optimization, it's very simple and easy to do. Just simply uncheck the additional command line arguments box, then press done. This now leads us onto a brand new and incredibly important optimization for clearing out excess disk space. With inside of it, we're simply going to be navigating down to the Call of Duty Warzone or Call of Duty Modern Warfare application, whichever you use to boot into Warzone. With inside of there, you then want to go to the options menu and navigate down to modify install. With inside of here, navigate up to modify install in the top right hand side, and you can then begin to actually uninstall parts of the game which you no longer wish to use. Once that's been completed, you then go ahead and press confirm, and if you are removing parts of your game, you'll then go ahead and click on start update. For these optimizations, we're first of all going to be starting off with our power options. These are going to be set on a per system basis, whether you have an Intel based system or a Ryzen based system. For this, navigate down to the bottom left hand side, type in power space plan. Once that's typed in, go to Edit Power Options. With inside of here, navigate up to the Power Options tab, then navigate down to Show Additional Plans. Now, for those of you running on an AMD Ryzen based system, it is recommended to go with one of the AMD Ryzen specific power plans with inside of Windows if these are available to you. As you can see, I have AMD Ryzen Balanced and High Performance. Now, for those of you running on Intel based systems, you want to be going with either the default Windows High Performance power plan found here, or you want to be going with the Ultimate Performance power plan. For a few very quick and easy important optimizations to set for both your mouse and keyboard to reduce input latency, starting off with the keyboard, navigate down to the bottom left hand side and type in keyboard. Go ahead and click on keyboard and ensure that the character repeat rate for both repeat delay and repeat rate are both set to fast and short. Once those have been set, press apply, press OK. That will help Windows respond faster to multiple inputs of buttons on your keyboard. For the mouse optimization, we can navigate down to the bottom left hand side once again, type in mouse space settings. With inside of here, go inside of mouse settings, navigate over to the right hand side to additional mouse options. With inside of here, navigate up to pointer options options, navigate down to motion and ensure that enhanced pointer precision is unchecked. We can then drag the pointer speed slider all the way to the left hand side. We're going to be setting our speed to 6 out of 11. So we're currently on option 1 so we're going to be going into 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Once that's set to 6, navigate down to the bottom right hand side, select apply. That will help remove any and all mouse acceleration from the Windows operating system itself. Now moving on to some incredibly important, fast to apply optimizations for any of you that use Discord whilst playing the game. Navigate inside of Discord, navigate down to the bottom left hand side to user settings. With inside of here, proceed to scroll down to the overlay tab. Inside of here, you want to ensure that the enable in-game overlay option is actually switched off. Once that's been set, navigate down to the bottom left hand side once again, go to the appearance tab. Proceed to scroll all the way down to the bottom where you'll be met with the advanced options and we're going to be looking for hardware acceleration. Now, depending on your system specs will depend on how you're going to have this option set. For those of you running on ultra low end old to medium end PCs, you want to go ahead and actually ensure that hardware acceleration is turned on. For those of you running on medium end to ultra high end gaming PCs, go ahead and turn hardware acceleration off. Once that's been set, we can then go ahead and minimize out of Discord. Now, before we go ahead and boot into the game to finalize our in-game settings, there is one last and arguably the most important optimization throughout this entire video. And this comes in the form of the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner or ISLC program. This is a simple, easy, and highly effective two-in-one optimization program. The first part of the program comes in the form of the timer resolution application, which can drastically help improve FPS with inside of the game, helping it become more stable, and more importantly, can drastically reduce input latency from the operating system System, the game and the hardware installed to your PC, allowing for a much snappier and responsive feeling game. The second part of the program comes in the form of the standby list cleaner, which can help close and clean up any excess running background tasks, helping free up an excess pool of RAM on your PC. To download the program, navigate down to the ISLC or Intelligent Standby List Cleaner link in the description down below. Once you've met with this webpage, simply scroll down to the click here for download and support button. Once you're done with inside of there, simply then go ahead and scroll down the official download here section with inside of the website. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and select open and I like to extract this to my desktop. So click on the three dots, select desktop, then press OK and extract. You should then be met with the ISLC folder on your desktop. Go ahead and double click on the folder, then navigate up to the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner EXE and double click. Now once the program opens up, it will require a minor bit of setup.
setup for the first box, this should be set to 1024. The second box needs to be set to roughly half of your overall system memory. You can find this value for your PC at the top in the left hand side. For me that's 32,000, so I'm going to be setting my memory to 16,000. Once that's done, navigate over to the wanted time resolution box, set this to a value of 0 0.50, then use the delete key to remove all other values, then navigate down to ISLC polling rate, set this to 500 for high end PCs, and for medium to low end PCs, set this to 1000. Once that's been set, we can then navigate over to the right hand side to start, then click on purge standby list. As you can see, my standby list has currently gone from using 6 gigabytes of my RAM to 0. So what we're simply going to go ahead and do now is minimize the program, and we're then good to continue on. All there is left to do now is to simply boot into Call of Duty Warzone, navigate inside of the settings menu, and we can then finalize our in-game options. Now when you first boot the game after applying all of these optimizations, you may be met with the prompt which mentions that you might have changed hardware since you last booted, and if you wish to change your in-game settings. For this option, simply go ahead and select no to all options until the game boots. Once you've booted inside of the game, navigate down to the bottom left hand side to the options menu. We can start off by going into keyboard and mouse. You want to ensure that mouse smoothing, filtering, and acceleration are all turned off. Once that's been set, we can then navigate up to the general tab. Field of view with inside of here can be set to anything you wish to do so, but do bear in mind that the lower this value is, the worst FPS you'll be getting. The sweet spot for the best FPS actually seems to be 110. We can then navigate down to skip introduction movie, go ahead and turn this on. Minimap shape should be switched to square. We can then proceed to go down to content filters and change dismemberment and gore effects to disabled. This is where you can also enable an FPS, server latency and packet loss counter in the top left of your screen like you can see in mine. Once you're done with inside of there we can then navigate up to the graphics tab. Starting off with display mode. This should be set to full screen for absolutely everyone for the best performance possible. Navigating down to refresh rate, this should be set to the highest option available. This now brings us down to the custom frame rate limit. Now for everyone watching this video, unless you are setting a custom frame rate cap for any reason such as if your PC is suffering from overheating issues or if you're wishing to cap it to your monitor's refresh rate, if you are wanting the best performance possible and the highest amount of FPS possible, it's highly recommended to actually navigate over to custom and change this to unlimited. We can then proceed to scroll down. We're going to be coming back to render resolution at the end of our in-game settings so simply ignore this for now. We can then proceed to scroll down to sync every frame. This should be turned to disabled. Nvidia highlights should be disabled for the best performance possible. This now leads us on to Nvidia reflex low latency. If this option is available to you, we're going to be setting this depending on your system specs. For those of you running on an Nvidia GeForce RTX card, so any of the 20 or 30 series RTX cards, I'd recommend navigating down and actually turning this to enabled. For any of you that are running on an Nvidia GeForce GTX series, I'd recommend going with enabled plus boost. Enabled plus boost can also help those of you that are running in very CPU bound scenarios or on older CPUs or lower end CPUs. For me I'm going to be going with enabled. This now leads us on to the in-game settings themselves. All of the following in-game settings which are going to be shown on screen now are my recommended settings for every single one of you watching this video. For the best visual fidelity for a competitive advantage and FPS, texture resolution should be set to low as setting this higher on Nvidia cards can sometimes cause a VRAM bug causing drastically lower FPS. Texture filter anastropic should be set to normal. Particle quality can be set to high for the best visual fidelity. Bullet impacts and sprays I recommend disabling. Tessellation disabled. On demand texture streaming disabled. Navigating down to streaming quality I'd recommend setting this to low. Shadow map resolution should be set to low. Cache spot shadows enabled and cache sun shadows enabled. Particle lighting should be set to normal. DirectX ray tracing should be disabled. Ambient occlusion disabled. Screen space reflections disabled. Anti-aliasing should either be set to off or if you do want a slightly smoother image I'd recommend going with SMAA one times at the highest. Do not set any other anti-aliasing option. Depth of field should be set to disabled. Filmic strength zero. World motion blur disabled. Weapon motion blur disabled and last but not least film grain set to zero. Once all of those options have been set go ahead and press apply. Once all of those in-game settings have been set feel free to then go ahead and boot into a match. See how your in-game settings both look and perform and if you do want to make any slight minor adjustments go ahead and do so. Now for those of you that are looking for slightly better FPS at the end of this video and you're not quite satisfied with your FPS gains navigate down to your render resolution option. We're going to start off with a value of 100. On the right hand side of the screen now you'll be seeing recommended values depending on your system specs and desired FPS. The main thing to remember when setting your render resolution is that the lower the render resolution the worse your game is going to look but the better the FPS you'll be receiving. For the most part I'd recommend starting off with a value of 89%, trying that out with inside of the game, seeing how that performs, then never getting down to 70 and continue to go lower and lower and lower until you find your personal balance of visual fidelity and what works best on your PC. A bonus optimization for any of you that are running on an Nvidia graphics card and you do use the Nvidia GeForce options such as instant replay, go ahead and press Alt and Z on your keyboard. If you do want the best FPS and input latency possible and you don't use the option or don't mind giving the option up, never get down to instant replay and I'd recommend actually turning this off. Alongside that it's also recommended to go over to your game filters and ensure that no game filters are applied as setting any game filters with inside of 
of Warzone will automatically decrease your FPS by at least 10%. So do not set any game filters if you do want the best performance possible. Now, after you've set up all of your in-game options, tried them out, played with them, and you're completely happy with them, it's actually recommended to go ahead and lock your in-game settings, which is very simple and easy to do. And this will stop that pesky bug of when you boot up the game and the game has automatically changed some of your settings back. So you have to adjust your in-game settings every single time you boot the game. With the game still running, navigate down to the bottom left-hand side and click on the Windows button. Navigate up to your documents once again. With inside of here, navigate up to the Call of Duty Modern Warfare folder, go inside of Players. With inside of here, we're simply going to be highlighting and selecting every single file which starts with the name config. Once all of the files with inside of your folder have been selected, right click, go to properties, then go ahead and set attributes to read only. Once that's done, press apply, press OK. Now do bear in mind any in-game options you wish to change in the future will not be able to be changed unless these files are unlocked. If you do wish to come back and unlock these files, go ahead and right click on all of them once again, properties, unselect read only. But assuming we're going to be locking them, read only, apply and OK. And there you guys have it. That is my ultimate FPS increase guide for Call of Duty Warzone 2.0. If you guys have enjoyed this video and are happy with your results, once again, please do remember to like the video as it does help me out tremendously. And if you do enjoy this sort of content, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever new content goes live on the channel or updated Warzone guides come out. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'm Pangino and I'll see you in the next one.